purpose. A couple weeks ago, I went to uh, Now, all right, it's unmuted. So, anyway, one day at a time. No, I'm just uh, my husband, he doesn't like to travel.
Can you hear, hear us talking up here? But trying yeah, to that one guy.
the work session of the Fluvan Accounting Planning Commission for May 9, 2023. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. Next, uh, Mr. Miles will be opening the work session uh, with about the Venton Farm Special Use Permit application. Yes, sir, Chairman Bibb and members of the commission, you do have before you tonight a copy of the Venton Farms uh, site access layout, 11 by 17. <laughs> if you'd like to use that as reference as we go over the um, information on this. Um, special use permit request. And I'm going over a lot of this information with you tonight because it is a rather large case, new case, and it actually has four special use permits rather than just one. So and I'll go over those with you all. And you know, feel free to stop and ask any questions, but really what we're what we're trying to do as staff is propose and let you all know that there's a lot of um transportation or traffic related um, items or issues we'd like to work with the uh, applicant and their Kimberly Horn, their, their engineering consultant on. So, which will start on um, Thursday on May 11th at 10 um, with this project. <laughs> so again, just kind of like as we do the special use permit case, I'll kind of get you all oriented. I think most of you all are aware um, that you're over here off of um, Rolling Road South, Blue Mountain Lane, and this in this area here. Um, so Scottsville here, and they're just um, due north. Um, these are the actual Flavana County parcels, um, the five parcels that are located on on uh, Rolling Road and Briary Creek Roads. And to give you a little better understanding, a little hard to see in this dark map, but we had to use Google. Um, Google Earth Maps to be able to show you both sets of parcels in Albemarle County and Flavana. So the yellow pin markers are basically where we believe and understand that the entrances to the project would be located. Um, and this pin actually would come up here and be more um, in this vicinity here for the, which we'll show you um, in the discussion tonight. But the, um, there's five parcels in, Al in Flavana County and two in Albemarle that are the, the much larger parcels that encompass the um, lake area and um, yeah. most, of the, most of the existing farm or Venton farm um, in this vicinity here. So for everyone's um, you know, information, they, they did, the applicant, um, did file their um, special use permits for in Flavana County on May 1st and two in Albemarle County. Um, so they're officially filed in both jurisdictions. Um, they have indicated in their application for, for us, for us it's a camp definition, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, and in Albemarle County, it's a boarding camp. They're pretty much one and the same, and I'll show you in the definitions, but, um, no RVs will would be permitted, and for our perspective, from our perspective, excuse me, um, we would that would limit um, having any RVs on rural roads around leading into this property. So basically, you would be driving to the camp or Venton Farms camp in your own car, SUV, you know, truck, what have you, not not in an RV and pulling the camper trailer and all that. Um, Is that a condition of the application? It's currently a proposed condition from them, but it would be one from us. And um, and I believe um, I'm trying not to speak for Albemarle staff, but both of both localities would look at having it as a condition that no RVs would be permitted. And I'll explain more in the definitions of between camp and campground in the zoning ordinance for Flavana, for Flavana County. It 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 makes it so you have to apply for one or the other. So. Um, 
we are meeting um, um, this Thursday, May 11th, with the Reventance Farms camp developer and their consultants, which uh, one consultant is um, Kimley Horm Engineering. Um, they've they've filed as part of their special use permit application um, a, what's called a traffic assessment. It's not a it's not a traffic study or a traffic uh, impact analysis TIA. It's really just scratching the surface of saying you know um, camp traffic tra camp um, traffic estimates are shown and um, so we've discussed it with um, Aaron Lebeau, our VDOT Louisa residency engineer and indirect uh, indirectly Aaron has also spoke with uh, John Wilson the VDOT Charlottesville residence residence engineer who used to be ours here in um, in Flavana. Um, but really at this point um, both localities have um, agreed upon that Flavana County will mainly go through the VDOT Louisa residency for traffic and transportation. And um, uh, the Albemarle side of the project, since the majority of the environmental features are located in Albemarle with the um, uh, lake and ponds and dams and whatnot, um, with the review of DEQ, and they do um, full Ches Bay um, stormwater analysis so that a lot of the environmental things would be going underneath um, DEQ, a DEQ permit through um, Albemarle County's review. We would still review um, erosion and sediment control information um, in Flavana County for our aspects, but um, the overall permitting through DEQ and Albemarle um, and environmental review um, would be under under their purview. Oh, you want, okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Coming up now. Thank. All right. Thanks. All right, let me get back into. No, that's very important. Uh, thank you. All right, so um, in the in the analysis that we, and just so everyone's aware, we have been, we did meet with them uh, at the Water's Edge facility um, back um, for their joint meeting, for their community meeting, um, Albemarle County staff and um, Flavana staff um, at the Water's Edge. We've met with them prior to uh, the pre-application conference with them, prior to submitting um, with Steve Lane, their attorney, who filed both sets of applications. Um, we feel it's going to be very important to not only discuss the traffic assessment document, but to look at, you're looking at well over a thousand campers, um, people, persons. So each 600 um, square foot cabin could hold basically two couples, four people, a full family of four, what have you. Um, so you know, with 250 times four, I mean, you're, you're, you're right there, you know, you're getting up to a thousand, then you have to start taking in the population of the people that are there as the camp management that may reside on premises in some of the cabins or, you know, like you, when you're at a national park, there are rangers or what have you, staff that comes to um, work during the day, and then all, all of their related outfitter partners um, that operate the equestrian center, the adventure forest, and um, um, in Albemarle County and so on, all these different um, types of functions that when you're at the camp for a weekend or a week or whatever, that there's going to be probably at peak periods at least 800 to 1,200 people at this facility on 700 plus acres, um, which doesn't sound like a lot when you break it down, but when you start looking at the rural roads that surround um, this project, um, and it's all in Flavana. We've tried to do our best to find anywhere in Albemarle County where you can come in to this project um, and 
for you all to help us and assist us, let us know, because um, I've actually spent time with my wife driving on Sunday afternoons for Sunday drives to figure out as a tourist myself, so to speak, how I would access this property from Albemarle County in the majority. And we'll go over these. The so mapping. on the previous slide, all of those pinpoint entrances that you showed, um, there, there's no access points. Basically, anybody going into this this event facility, whatever we want to call it, would be going entering through Fluvanna County. On Yes, sir. On okay. Rolling Road and basically on Rolling Road. And um, John Michael uh, has made some really good maps. We'll, we'll show you in a second. But it's it's impacting three main roads, Ruiton Lake Road, Rolling Road South, and Antioch Road that all lead in as rural roads to the site. So, yes, Mr. Good, there, there's um, all the traffic. 90% of it, we believe, is through Flavanna County. So. And Branch Road. And Briarage Creek Road, yeah. yeah. Branch Road, I said. Uh, on Branch Road, um, as you come down uh, Roten Lake and all that, yes. So when, um, in working with Bill Fritz, my counterpart in Alboron, we're you know, obviously going to, um, as they're analyzing um, their, their portions and parts of this project, um, that we would work with their staff to look at rural intersections that are in Albemarle County from the Charlottesville area leading into this camp location um, so that we can, you know, have a full scope of where the um, VDOT um, analysis and county analysis is for getting to this um, location. So to give you a little understanding or background, and we touched upon this at the first um, uh, open house meeting at um, Water's Edge, but the definition of camp in the zoning ordinance is what this falls under, what they've described to us and how they filed their application. Um, basically, it's a camp that um, has all the um, complete necessary accessory uses and structures. And the key word there is they're actually cabins. So they're built structures, they're, they're not houses, they're camps or, or cabins or cottages. Um, and you'll see in the second part of our definition, it talks about seasonal accommodations may be provided. Um, obviously, a lot of their peak business is probably going to be during the warmer months from April to like October, but they do propose to be year round. Um, but you'll also notice that it includes boarding camps, day camps and summer camps. So Albemarle County and their zoning ordinance calls it a boarding camp. So what it's not in our mind in analyzing it is it's not a campground. So a campground is an area that's used for transient occupancy by either camping in tents, camping trailers, travel trailers, motor homes, which are RVs, or similar transportable or temporary sleeping quarters of any kind. So it's not a structure. It's a motorized um, or temporary structure. Um, the other key thing that we describe to them and let them know is that the purpose of the definition for a campground, you can't be there for more than 120 days and they want to be in the facility 24 seven year round. <laughs> so it has to be a camp. So the breakdown um, in doing the special use permit, um, they applied for a camp in both localities. Can I ask I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Should that... Uh... In parentheses, no RVs be up with the camp thing and not down with the um, I just because I, right. all that other stuff is just describing are RVs, right? Yes, I was just trying to key in the fact that motorhomes equaled um, RVs. And since they've applied um, as a camp that they, and we would like to, as Flavana County, and we believe Albemarle to condition them, that no recreational vehicles will be allowed in this facility whatsoever. We've at, we've at the open house community meeting, they indicated that 40 or 50 might come in and be parked there. No, um, we don't want, if you're a camp, we do not want to, and, and, and I know the, um, the main um, uh, developer indicated um, that there weren't going to be any, and then there was going to be 40 or 50. So we made it quite clear to Steve Lane, the attorney that um, representing them is that, so let's all, you know, get on the level playing field where there will be no RVs um, or any, any type of temporary camper trailers, travel trailers brought in because that's towing a vehicle or driving a vehicle down rural roads that we just don't think it's appropriate. Um, 
it's already um, when you're driving around um, on some of these roads anyways, and like myself driving around, looking around, um, um, I had people come up on my tailgate because um, look at this guy, he's driving around, you know? So, I mean, that's what some of the people who've never been here before are going to do as well. So um, all of us, um, you know, other folks that have lived here all their lives and traveled through there, you travel through there quick and clean and smooth. But so what we're trying to do is indicate that how can we have traffic for people who want to come and enjoy themselves at this camp to be as smooth and safe um, as possible. So that's where we've um, tried to structure our focus on um, for reviewing this camp facility. Question for you. Yes. Um, just a clarification. The camp and the structures, mm -hmm. are they going to be like mini cabins, yurts? No. Like, or They're actually built. Building. So it will be like a mini it's a cabin. It's a whatever. cottage or right. cabin. Something similar to what's like out at, I don't know if you're familiar with Shenandoah Crossings. Yes. Uh, Eric Dahl and I've looked at, yeah, there are, like they that. have different um, levels of, they have right. the full lodge there. They have the cabins you can and the rent. yurts the yurts, and the yurts. The big camps right and they do have the rv and right. so i mean a lot of stuff going on in gordonsville there so yes we so is that what they're proposing Something they're proposing simple? cabins only cabins 250 only. cabins that's okay. it okay. so we're trying to hold them to understanding that that's what you're doing um so that we can get an um an understanding and a handle on the traffic so no yurts even though they consider those Permanent I don't structure. want to rule any of those out from okay. the building code. I mean, Andy Wills did talk, I mean, uh, our building official did talk to them. But they were quite clear that it, that, again, that's a temporary structure that's like on a pallet or, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's this is like you're constructing a cabin, cabin 50 feet. They're also spacing them 50 feet apart for fire safety. You're not in your normal neighborhood um where you're 15 feet or uh, greater between houses you know um and, and even the most dense subdivisions so so yes it, there there'd be 250 cabins only um um for the camp structures okay um and then what we understood in the pre-application conference meeting and what they've described and illustrated is that they're built structures okay it, everything meeting the building code it's just a I don't even want to call it. It's almost like a tiny house that you stay in for a weekend or a week. So similar to it's six hundred square feet, feet, two bedrooms, a bathroom, you know, kitchen, kitchen okay. and a little living sitting area. So, okay. yep. thank you. Yes, ma'am. So the other, um, the other uh, to recap. So they have the special use permit for the camp, which is the main um, application. Um, they would have uh, not only in Flavana, but also in Albemarle, they would have um, ap they have an application for special use permit for central water system to serve the however many cabins we have, 30 or 35. Um, and then a central sewer system that they're going through um, Virginia Department of Health for permit that majority of it would be in Albemarle County, but Albemarle County can't serve the the um, cabins in Flavana County. So they have to have two systems. And what we understand from the um, Kimberly Horn, the um, uh, engineering firm that's, you know, done the work with VDH is there's three systems in Albemarle and one in Louisa or in Flavana that would be um, set up and all that would be operating under a permit that Sun Reventon Farm LLC owns and takes care of that. Like 30 years from now, it can't be turned over to Albemarle County or Philadelphia County to operate. They would continually operate. And I don't really want to get too far off into the discussion of that because I don't think the majority of our concern is not going to be related to that. I think that's Al Albemarle County and BDH is going to be handling that. Okay. So, but the, the fourth special use permit is really important for us as well as the camp is the event facility because um, we'll, we can get to the, the overall map and you all have the 11 by 17, but the current, wat, current Water's Edge facility um, and their plans for the master plan would become a maintenance facility 
Um, if you've ever been in there, they have three very large garage doors that open up. Um, and that's where they would like to um, have their back of house or maintenance facility. The event facility, uh, new new facility would move into the center of the property away from Rolling Road South. Um, and they've uh, worked with us throughout the time and the short time we've been working with them about trying to call it a clubhouse. And that would only be rented out to the facility um, users of the camp. But we, uh, I'm going to try to politely say this, we don't trust that. So we're actually going to continue to focus on having it as an event facility with their own special use permit conditions to operate there. Um, so that's the fourth one. So let's go ahead and move away from the event facility. But two other things, just like we just did with Hardware Hills Vineyard with you all last month. Um, one, it cannot be a lodge. So they, you know, Preventon Farms couldn't all of a sudden turn it into a Rotary Club meeting space monthly or something. Nope, that's a lodge. That's a whole other special use permit. And then also they can't um, on currently on um, in the open space area, they can't have outdoor gatherings. So they couldn't come and operate um, uh, some type of outdoor music festival on their own campsite. Um, that's outdoor gathering. It's a whole nother special exception, um, special use permit, excuse me. So let's kind of, um, I'd like to try to shift gears here a little bit and show you some of the mapping that we've been doing to um, look at where, if you came to Reventon Farms Camp, you got a brochure or an email or something and you, you know, wanted to, you know, you and your family wanted to go there. Um, what we believe in our research is that you're going to come off of um, I-64 for the most part. You're going to come straight down at exit 136 to Palmyra, straight down 15, come to the Palmyra roundabout, come up 53 and turn left where there's no left turn uh, lane onto Ruritan Lake Road, which we consider this area of Cunningham um, one of our unfortunate, um, unfortunately kind of a choke point of traffic. And then as you all know, if you've ever sat on Roots and Lake Road 619 trying to get onto 53, especially to make a left-hand movement, there is no left turn or right turns there either. So it's a straight old fashioned T intersection with some slight um, uh, gym, what they call um, geometry of the road that's, that makes it even harder. So, but, but basically, then once you get onto Ruritan Lake Road, and as Chairman Bibb said, and onto Branch Road, you're traveling on these very um, rural roads, 619, over here, over to Rolling Road South, and coming down um, into the Antioch area, or um, if you, because the other thing is, if anyone's coming out of basically the Southwest Virginia area, Roanoke, um, Lynchburg, Nelson County, you're coming in off a of six, and then you're probably going to come off Antioch Road. So the the best case scenario, which we don't think most people are going to do, is people would come out of like the Richmond area on Route Six through Goochland, and come up six, which Route Six is a pretty good road um, with the new bridges and and road work that they've done on Route Six here in the county over over the last several years, and then you would make a you know. Get right at kid's store, you get onto Rolling Road South. So, um, so, but, but the impact is on these three main roads Roach and Lake Road, Rolling Road South, and Antioch Road, and indirectly Briary Creek um, Road, which was going to be their majority of their traffic. Um, so, a little closer view of that. This, these are again the four, I mean, the five parcels in Flavana County. This is the main parcel here. This is Briary Creek Road here and Rolling Road South. Um, here, so people would be coming in, and this is potentially another uh, somewhat of a choke point. If people all arrive here like Friday night at six, five or six in the evening, and they're all trying to get in to the camp, then that that area on Briary Creek Road. And if again, if any of you've driven on Briary Creek Road, it's a very unimproved road. It's almost like a pretty good some pretty good driveway um, to some people's houses, and very few people live there. Um, on Briar Creek Road in Flavana. On the last part, and this is a little fuzzy, but I just wanted to try to give you an overall understanding that, um, like we said, you're going to come off of most likely 64 coming out of Stanton or Charlottesville and come down 
um, and make any one of, if you were to come down here and come to, to um, like 250 and 20 and all that, 20 doesn't take you into this, this location here. 20 almost um, acts as this like outer beltway, um, either at 53 here at the Albemarle line and 20, or you come all the way around and you're back in Scottsville, had to get, you have to get on Antioch Road. So there's no really plausible way to make it, make your way other than if you really get down into um, the, the where Mount Ida Reserve is and you're on the other, the whole, totally other side of um, the farm. And then there again, you're not able to make it to the camp that's located over here. So um, what we're trying to point out is the, the road network for accessing this proposed um, campground and camp amenity facility, um, we believe there needs to be some work done with VDOT and the applicant, so in both localities. So again, and I've, I've tried to point out um, in text version of that, you're, you're coming off all these major roads and working your way down um, into these rural roads. Um, and if you're doing that at night or whatever, that's even harder. So people are arriving Friday night or Saturday, Sunday, you know, um, it, it may even be harder for them. So, but we, we are trying to be positive and proactive and understand that um, I-64 and 15 are going to be probably the main areas from Northern Virginia and the Richmond area, and then possibly um, Route 6 could be a good secondary access for people coming from either Richmond in the east and Roanoke in the west. So, um, kind of looking at it from a land use and comprehensive plan perspective, you know, how we've talked with you all over the last year more about rural crossroads areas. Um, we feel that the Cunningham Rural Crossroads and the Kids Store, and then we kind of did a little stretch here with Mr. Bibb on the Antioch Rural Crossroads area. But why we're doing that is we're trying to understand that there's development coming to an area that's rural. And we need to try to understand as the planning commission and staff, how, how do we want to have this come through the process to make improvements that if they're interested in having 250 cabins in this area, what what type of things um, are we going to need to look and work with them on to make sure it's safe for health, safety, and welfare for their their guests and our tourists or, res, you know, people visiting Flavana County? Yeah, no, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse or anything, but these are the three main roads that we feel are, are gonna be potentially impacted um, with traffic that it's not normal. Um, basically, a lot of the rural roads from you all that live out in this area or travel through this area for work or play or whatever yourself, you'll notice that most of the rural roads are serving acting, active working farms and rural houses. They're not serving 250 cabins. Um, and we understand that they operate several facilities here in the state of Virginia. One of them is, you know, Jellystone Park up in um, Luray, Page County. So that's one of their closest um, facilities that they have. Um, and so we're looking at benchmarking. And as you all mentioned earlier, we, um, we originally um, steered ourselves towards Shenandoah Crossing. Um, regionally, we've also, also thought about what is um, Nelson done with Wintergreen? What is Rockingham done with Mass and Nutton, and those are really large facilities. But again, you have to kind of scale it down and say 250 cabins. You know what what impact is it having on our road network compared to over time what's Nelson done with Wintergreen and Rockingham with Mass and Nutton? So there's lessons to be learned for us, hopefully there, and we're trying to do that research um, to to get the best outcome for Flavana County um, for you all at the Planning Commission and then the board to analyze this project. So the, um, we do have full sets of a lot of these um, overall um, 11 by 17, but I, what I've tried to give you all is the one that we thought was most important for traffic. Um, this is their master plan, and please also keep in mind when you're looking at this, north is to the left here. Um, 
this is a, a landscape view of it. So um, this is this is Albemarle County, Flavana County. This is north and south here. So, but basically, you'll see the the jurisdictional line here is letting you see that majority of these cabins um, in development is in Albemarle County. So this is the adventure forest over here. This is all of the cabins. Um, a lot of the structures that are taxable for them in Albemarle County, um, their food and beverage um, location, um, you know, just going on and on. Arts and crafts facilities. Um, we have we have everything that comes in. You come in here off of Briary Creek Road and you enter in a one way direction here and you come to a um, guest check in location. So you've arrived in Fulvana County and. Um, then you get checked in and then you end up going and do most of your activities in Albemarle County, unless you happen to be over here in this um, neighborhood area of the cabins in the project. Um, this is the um, uh, the current event facility. This is the um, new one that's proposed here. And then this is um, in Flavana County, the equestrian center. Um, which by the A1 part of the zoning ordinance, an equestrian center is actually a buy right use. So we, we um, have been working with them on some of the accessory or buy right uses that would be in the county. Um, so that would, what we understand um, is they would be operating the equestrian center with um, other outfitters, people that handle horses um, and you know, operate the uh, equestrian center, trail riding, what have you, whatever they're going to do there. Has there been any sort of talks with Albemarle and any sort of revenue share? Because it sounds like to me a lot of that Blue Band is going to be dealing with a lot of the bad stuff and Albemarle is going to be getting a lot of the tax revenue. Mm -hmm. Answer is no. Yeah. So there's no mechanism. No mechanism for it. So basically, it's volunteer that do that, but it's not forced. And a significant portion of the tax revenue from this project will go to Albemarle um, County, not Fluvanna. Am I correct in saying that? Or Yes, sir, you're correct. And so, so it's a substantial. Probably a substantial majority. Yeah, substantial right? majority. And then working with Steve Lane, the attorney, you know, and talking with him when he filed his applications, you know, I mean, Albemarle is set up with hotel tax, lodging tax, meals tax, you know, so they have all these type things. But those are some of the things that hurt larger, larger counties and cities during COVID because they lost that revenue. But at the same time, lessons learned for us. Are we able to, you know, be able to set up and capture some things? Um, or like Mr. Payne said, we're going to, you know, work with them to see about, is there any way to, to equalize some of this? So, but I just want, I don't want to get too much into that until we work with them um, in the technical review aspect of it. Could I ask you one other question? Yes, sir. There's no entrances to this facility in Alma County, right? Only exit. From, no, there's there's no enter um, no <coughs> entrances or exits. Even the emergency exit comes out under Rolling Road. So, so everything that's shown on your eleven by seventeen layout is all in Flavanico. Okay, because when I once was at another meeting about them, it looked like they had one exit in Alma County. Well, we had pinned that. Well, we thought there was an, a possibility for them to have one over here on the western side of the Alamo Mall part of the project. Sorry. So most of it's in Alamo County, and all the entries is going to be through Fluvanna County. So pretty much they're using our roads to get to their facilities, yes. but we're not getting tax revenue from. Right. So okay. And and then and again, um, and I'm not I, I'm tonight. And I know Mr. Larkin Messino. Um, he sits on their. Uh, pre-app Albemarle County uh, TRC type over there, but and I don't want to talk too much in the details on that because we're still going to work through that um, on Thursday and going into this project. But the other main thing is, um, and Mr. Largo-Messino could probably you know, indicate, the majority of the public safety, public res first responders are going to come from the Pilvana, Scottsville side of the project. Because guess what? That's how you're accessing the project. So, those are some of the things that we've told the applicant and 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 their you know, consultants and everything about. Um, and and some of our folks, you know, have ideas to and and also working with the Scottsville um, station, we understand a you know good percentage of the people who work in Scott Scottsville's fire station uh, live in Flavangan. So you know, 
East Ravana or some of Mr. Largo Messina, some of the other stations that are farther away are going to respond and come around into Lavana County is what we understand too. And I'm not, I'm not trying to make any, um, we're just trying to point out some of the facts. Okay. And then the analysis will come later, okay. the opportunities to make things potentially better for Flavana overall is what we're trying to do. So, um, <clears throat> So the site access plan that you all have in front of you, um, this is the, the main layout and you'll see the colored um, diagram areas where, so this is the emergency access point. So as you asked before, Mr. Chairman Bibb, um, these three points um, of entrance and access, and this is the main, end. you mainly come in here um, and then you get into the project and you come around and then you mainly leave out the um, blue area here, um, main egress. Um, and then the maintenance people that run the camp will be going in and out of the water's edge current facility, that maintenance um, building. And then there'd be limited amount of people going in and out of here, which we've worked with VDOT because you're obviously you have horses, you're having large trucks and trailers getting in and out um, at times. So, but all of the emergency traffic, um, like let's say somehow our first responders have indicated, well, all these dams you're crossing and, you know, all these, some, like there's some major, you know, um, catastrophic event, a flood or, you know, tornado touches down or something and blocks all this area here. Well, everyone's going to be leaving out this emergency entrance over here if they make it to one of these entrances, um, these exits. So, but yes, everything is coming back out onto rolling roads out. Do we have any input from our fire and EMS folks um, that their viewpoints on any concerns with this, as far as access, as far as the equipment to, you know, get through some of this stuff that they've got here? Yes, our, our pre-application meeting we had, we spent a, probably about 40, 30 to 45 minutes discussing all that with Mike Brent. Um, Chief Constantino, um, Andy Wills, you know, served previously at the Paul Meyer Fire Station, all of the, all of them and a building and fire official. So all of them indicated that the 20 foot wide access um, roads, um, they there were some slight concerns about the dam crossings because you have a really large uh, ladder truck or heavy you know, apparatus trying to get across. But a lot of that's going to be analyzed by um, Albemarle County. Um, where there are having those crossings and the environmental features. Um, so I think um, that's going to be scrutinized um, by both localities with the consultants. So yes, but there have been um, there have been very good conversations, but I, I think it's going to be really important to get Scottsville Fire Chief involved. Um, I think um, you know Scottsville Fire and EMS people, rather than just us working as Flavana or as Albemarle, think that there needs to be some engagement there. Two questions: How many homes are actually on those roads, and do we know how the residents there feel about the potential additional traffic that might come? Or <laughs> I think I know, but I'm going to ask a question. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so, but do you know how many homes? No, that's a good point. When we do the analysis and write the staff report, we'll figure that out. It's, thank you for asking in that ma manner. It's it's scattered homes. There's there's some on Blue Mountain Lane. There's some along uh, Rolling Road South, but they're mainly on, you know, pretty good sized farms. Um, yeah, at the uh, open house uh, community meeting, they were not happy. Um, they were not happy for multiple reasons, not just traffic. Um, a lot of people, as Mr. Chairman Bibb has talked about, um, they all, people that live over in Albemarle County, they were concerned about someone trying to cross the Forded Creek area, that you know, the Ford area. Um, someone tries to come in from Roanoke or Nelson County and get to the camp. Well, you're going to cross. You're literally, and doing research um, myself, a lot of the old Creek Fords are from when we first had cars as Model Ts, and cars would actually just drive across little wet areas, you know, I mean, we didn't build bridges for a long time. It's the last hundred years, we, you know, 50 years. So. This is sometimes two or three feet wow. deep of water. Uh, I've been across it many times because they used to hunt that area a lot, so forth like that. Yeah. If you get over on Alabama Spring Road and you put it into your navigation to go to this property right here, it's going to take you through that. Creek. Take you through that road. 
And that road going down to it, if you come down there with an RV or a trailer or anything like that, it gets very narrow and it's it's more like gravel and sand road. Okay. And like it, uh, on Briar Creek Road, there's only like three or four houses. Uh, so I'll okay. area you right there. And in that area, I, mean, I don't live about two or two and a half miles away. There are farms, mm -hmm. farm animals. Right. Um, how is that going to affect them with all the traffic and possible? I'm just asking questions. Yeah, um, you know, uh, is that a concern? Well, I mean, there's the yeah, other folks that um, you know, that do animal husbandry. That um, you know, there's there's going to be in the days and times they go to market or purchase supplies or whatever. You know. It's Monday morning and people are leaving or Saturday afternoon when they're trying to service their wow. some of the hobby farmerist uh, farmers or the you know regular full time farmers everyone so one other real quick thing um, ma'am that they did ask about and I think that the applicants consultants done a very good job with um, is water tables for wells mm -hmm. they there are a lot of their um test wells and everything they're grabbing um capturing um 35 up to 60 gallons per minute so it's what i understand that it's pretty high water table here and um now on the flip side we've also heard that you know and i'm, I'm just speaking in general here but as as quality of maybe the well water and availability is that you know in some areas where they're engineering the um the um engineered um sewer systems um some of the soils aren't they're pretty good but they're not the best soils like water maybe okay. so but but i think that the concerns that we heard at the open house meeting is that um they had concerns about you know if 250 cabins are extracting x amount of water you know how does that change our water right for our house for our own well and bathing and drinking or even, you know, as you touched on earlier, for operating a farm, you know, um, watering animals and everything. So, um, but a lot of that um, technical analysis has been going on um, and with Albemarle County for the most part um, on some of their aspects. Um, but the, again, the traffic and the concerns that we have, um, you know, we're trying to focus on on that and get to some type of resolution um, so that we can bring this forward to you all um, at the Planning Commission. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So again, to kind of recap, um, these are, as you see on your 11 by 17 layout, these are all the areas, all for the main camp entry, the guest check-in, the main camp exit, and the emergency access is all on Rolling Road South and Briar Creek Road. Um, in Flavana County. So. Why would they not have any interest in uh, Almo County? Uh, Chairman Bev, I, 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 one, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if that, I think it's just there, there's, when you drive around over there, like I said, when you come back to, um, let me escape out of here. Something. I know the reason, but I'm just asking. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to be factual, sir, and just keep on the, um, but when you're when you're dealing with major roads and the only thing that is you know is this this VDOT map here shows you i mean 20 goes as this outer road here there's nothing coming there's 795 as i talked to staff you know folks who lived here 795 comes up to what 250 right there so again you're coming back to a main road you know, or 795 comes off of 53, 53 right. uh, and then you go uh, right. across 795 and it, then it turns into 620. Yes. Uh, it passes the clue. Your property turns left up the hill. And so, so my last Sunday went, drive out there was I, I ended every, up on James Monroe Parkway mm -hmm. and then drove all the way, um, kept a beautiful um, brick wall there and, every, you know, stone wall and everything and drove down and you ended up back on 53. So you always end up in Albemarle County. You always end up on major roads, but there's there's no rural roads. So to when get you, you there. when you got to Woodridge Store, you had fun, right? With yeah, four roads yes. Going. Like you told me, yes, sir. There, there. That was where the guy really came up on my bumper. As he was, I think, trying to get to Pantops, um, and wanted me to get out of his way Sunday afternoon at three. So yes, sir. Um, Good question, Mr. Miles. Um, you mentioned, I think, the figure you mentioned earlier was maybe eight hundred to twelve hundred tours per weekend or at any given time. Is there any idea where that number might go when you consider the amount of employees there that are coming and going back and forth at any given time? Do they have any idea how many 
employees. I mean, because you got to think the not just the, the tourists themselves, but the employees are going to be coming through those entrances as right. well. Yeah, that's where we were trying to throw out that the you know um, we, we can. That's what we're hoping to have Kimley Horn break down a little further for us. Okay. Um, on Thursday, and I think they're coming with some additional numbers after speaking with Aaron LeBeau, um, and and indirectly, as I said, John Wilson, Aaron, Aaron's uh, land use engineer, and Scott Thornton, uh, the residency engineer, are both pretty much covering um, this project. But um, uh, Albemarle Transportation um, Division and um, uh, the Charlottesville Residency, John Wilson, are assisting. So. Who will actually own this? <clears throat> will it be leased? Or <clears throat> uh, no, there are, uh, ma'am. The Sun Communities own, well, would own it. It's Sun Revent and Farm LLC. So they own um, numerous facilities. Um, they own campgrounds. One, of, they indicated they're one of the largest marina operators. Um, they have a full, full-fledged uh, employee system of operating and, and managing the facilities um, on site. So they're pur purchasing this if this goes through? I believe so. They're currently under contract with Mr. Sullivan to, okay. to get this special use permit. Yes, ma'am. But that, Chairman Bibb, that's about what I have for you all. I wanted to kind of walk through everyone's um, parts of, um, of this. And it, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a large project, a good proactive project for us to work on, but I think um, we just wanted to get it out there for you all and, and mainly let overall everyone know that the applications have been filed and we do have yeah. this probably, information. If you're going to get to the solar stuff, you probably need to stop at this point on the event farm stuff and go to that because well, we only got about 14 more minutes. Yeah. So, well, what I was would really like to talk to you all about is some of the upcoming um uh, land use planning workshop dates. Um, you all don't have this chart here. I just um, put this together um, with some additional um, information, but I think you all have in front of you a copy of um, what county administration has for an upcoming. Um, so let me go into another. get into the um so that can display it actually in what's coming up next and seven o'clock meeting but we're trying to complete um the what we have relative to some of our um land use workshops or what what county administration and um county overall has been working is to set up uh this meeting um coming up at the beginning of june saturday june 3rd um from 10 to 12. this would be looking at development or redevelopment in fork union um it's an opportunity for the fork union um uh, village um, and overall community um to come and speak um, coffee and conversation with the county, with Mrs. Uh, Booker, the Fork Union Supervisor, Mr. Dahl, Ms. Smack, and myself. Um, this this would be an opportunity um, to start some conversations on things that, uh, and keep in mind, uh, the streetscape project uh, in the FUMA area was done in 2010 or 2011. So the streetscape, sidewalk, uh, lighting, um, all of that, and there's there's an opportunity to do. Um, we work with VDOT um, up to the pandemic and through the pandemic to do some do some work. They did they did do some uh, minor things about um, painting some crosswalks and some other things, kind of fixing parts of the existing sidewalk system. But I think you all are aware that their majority of that area around um, the old the old Fork Union um, uh, Village restaurant and uh, the um, former uh, VSI or former grocery store, um, now with the bank, the Truist Bank closed and, and so on. There, there's some activity that um, there are buildings there and we want to try to work and discuss opportunities to not have it continue to slide in a downward direction, but to see about what, what and where um, the conversation goes. Um, so 
we do have some opportunities um, in late spring and early summer also. Um, I was talking to Mrs. Morris the other day. We are still working on trying to set up the Nahor Village um, crossroads area um, discussion. Um, we may look at um, doing that here soon in the next week or two. Um, then also uh, the Palmyra Village and the streetscape work that we're doing there. Um, and then we've been finalizing a lot of the work, uh, which you'll see here soon at um, seven o'clock public hearing, the work that we've been doing in the Zion Crossroads area for design work um, and with the first use that is coming out of um, uh, the Zion Crossroads there at 250 and 15. So that's all I have for you at this point, if you wanna take a recess and prior to the seven o'clock hour. Okay, 6.50, we will take a recess until 7 o'clock, and we'll open our regular meeting at that time. Hey, Jason, or the jam. I get this. Where's the mute function on here? You know, a little thing that pops up and kind of get the mute. Yeah, the big This one's. Okay. When I was doing that, it was telling me to leave them, leave the meeting. Oh, did you not join in on the Zoom app? No, I don't. I'm not. I'm on the PC. Don't close that. Yeah. Yeah. Then go to like just put the arrow to the bottom of your screen. Oh, here it is. Here yeah. we go.
2023. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next order of business is the director report, Mr. Miles. Yes, sir, Chairman Bev, good evening, members of the commission. Just do a very brief uh, director's report since we went through the information on our event and farms in the work session. We'll just touch upon it here for a minute or two. This, um, this Thursday, May 11th, the technical review committee meeting um, will be focusing on the Reventon Farms um, special use permit for a camp for a central water system, central sewer system, and an event facility um, for SUP requests. This is the overall project as a camp and outdoor recreational uses um, proposed on approximately 745 acres, which about 300 in Flavana on our side and 445 in Albemarle, with 250 cabins that would um, allow uh, biking, hiking, uh, birding in an adventure forest, uh, rope challenge, uh, zip line kind of uh, type adventure forest, and an equestrian center on the property um, with access in Flavana County on Rolling Road South and Briary Creek Roads. Um, I am unmuted. Okay. I'll get this right up, man. But if I get right up on it, I'm fully unmuted. Um, um, so as the uh, Sun Reventon Farm LLC, um, they have filed um, these four applications on May 1st. Uh, the camp use, central water, central sewer, and event facility. Um, and this camp land use would only permit cabins and not any RV motorhomes, which is a camp uh, campground land use. And they've also filed two special use permits um, equally in Albemarle County for a boarding camp and their water and sewer um, needs for their cabins in that portion of Albemarle County. Again, this is the site map that we went over with you all um, during the work session and just for the public's knowledge. Um, this is uh, the Albemarle side um, over here. Um, the Flavana side here, and remember uh, that north is to your left here. So this is Rolling Road south here, Briary Creek Road that kind of framed the project. Um, Briary Creek Road would be the area where most um, entrance points would be here, coming into the project off of Briary Creek Road and Rolling Road south. And then the majority of the traffic would be leaving um, into Flavana County at this location here. And then the emergency access point is shown here in red, um, that if any of these points were blocked um, dur during catastrophe or storm, uh, the emergency access point would be here to leave again out onto Rolling Road South in Flavana County. Just a reminder, tomorrow night, um, Wednesday, May 10th at 6 p.m., this is the second solar community meeting. This is Pine Gate Renewable Solar. Um, located uh, headquartered in Asheville, North Carolina, um, is proposing to build a 16 megawatt utility scale solar energy facility, um, generally located off of Bremo Road. Um, you may remember they conducted their first meeting back on March 23rd, and this will be their second community meeting to answer the, some more of the detailed questions and comments from the meeting. Um, I think I forwarded to you all as commissioners their website that had additional uh, FAQ kind of answers, but we uh, staff felt that some of that was uh, a little too general, um, and hopefully they can get down into some of the more detailed questions with um, with the community tomorrow night. Um, just for everyone's knowledge, remember it was uh, originally, if you had heard, it was originally scheduled at 530 to 630. They have changed it um, to be from 6 to 7 p.m., 
um, and that's located in the Flavana Community Center on um, Route 15 and, and 14. And the contact information is shown on the screen, or you can contact myself or any of us here at staff, and we can get, get you information prior to the meeting. So just to clarify, the only thing that they did was, I, I looked at the website, I think I sent it to you, Loretta. Mm -hmm. um, basically, they answered the questions of the people that sent emails and asked questions and basically put it as a web page on their website. Is that kind of? Yes, sir. That's how we agree. Um, we agree that um, there's a little more than uh, website FAQ answers and questions. Um, so I think they have some more work to do tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Oh, right. probably everything, agree. Yeah, everything that I saw, even on with more basic generic questions, there weren't any big details of anything that anybody was asking at the meeting. So I'm hoping they are going to be prepared to answer those questions tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. We agree. And um, uh, just, you know, I forwarded what we could. Um, uh, Matt and Lorraine had forwarded stuff uh, with the uh recipients hidden so I didn't know who had received it and hadn't received it and also if you noticed in the sign up sheet there were a few places where people uh email wasn't as legible so we wanted to if you saw someone's name that was a friend or neighbor of yours that attended the meeting you could forward it on to them we did our best county staff and planning and county administration to get everything back out um that we could and I think that the applicant has done a fair job of trying to get everything back out but I do I think they have some pretty good work to do tomorrow night to explain to the community um, and just for everyone's knowledge they have met um, with some of the board members in different um, capacities um, through Mr. Dahl's office to discuss their project and one-on-ones and two-by-twos or what have you so they've done some um, some research and discussion with the board members so I think tomorrow night's the um, answers for the community and the planning commission and other folks as well. And again, these are the two subject parcels. Um, and this is, uh, you know, West Bottom and Brimo Roads here in this, this area here. So this this is the project. And as you can basically see, this is, if you remember, their, their uh, solar array kind of went into some of these fields here. Um, wave, and so they are they are fully screened in some aspects, um, better, better than some projects we've looked at. So, but these are the two parcels. Uh, coming up in the beginning of June, Saturday, June 3rd, there's a um, scheduled um, Fork Union Village community meeting, um, Saturday, June 3rd, from 10 a.m. to noon, um, in the same meeting space from Flavana Community Center, a coffee and conversation with the county, uh, topic of discussion, development in Fork Union. Um, so the guest speakers are Ms. Mazelle Booker, the Fork Union supervisor, Mr. Dahl, Jennifer Smack, and myself um, would be... Um, receiving and answering any comments or questions or recommendations that you all have as we're kind of wrapping up uh, work on uh, land use areas uh, of the comprehensive plan um, and additional thoughts that you have on new development, redevelopment, um, land uses that might be suitable in the 15 quarter of Fort Union. So, and I think you all have a copy of this um, and, um, County administration is going to start advertising in um, the Flavana Review towards the end of the month for this meeting, and then obviously uh, email blasting it out and through fan mail. Um, and then so if you all uh, want to distribute some of this to some of the um, folks in your community through your church or what have you, uh, let us know at um, the county um, the email down there is connect at flavanacounty.org. I think that gets you in touch with um, Ms. Harris, and she can help get additional uh, information out to the community. Will this be posted on the um, county website? Uh, yes, uh, on our ca um, calendar. Prominent place. A prominent place of our calendar, yes. Uh, so um, people that come and look at what, you know, like a meeting tonight, and they see there's a meeting tonight, then they can probably see on, and it is on a Saturday. So, you know, it's a different different day, but that also is being able to offer up people who are working during the week to come um, and meet from 10 to 12. Uh, with with um, with us at the community center, <clears throat> and then these are just some uh, reminder dates. Um, these are all your upcoming spring and um, summer meetings, um, and they're all located um, uh, obviously here at the Carriesburg Performing Arts Center. Um, Tuesday, June thirteenth, 
July 11th, August 8th, and September 12th. And we're pretty much forecasting um, that the meetings will start at 6 at work sessions and 7 p.m. for any scheduled public hearings and other matters that come before you all. Can we um, back up to the um, June 3rd meeting? Just one other question. Uh -huh. um, will we be live streaming this in any way? Zoom, Facebook Live, anything like that for folks who can't attend? Just ask. I'm looking back at Mr. Dahl to see if um, <laughs> I'm not sure what Ms. Harris uh, has. Okay, thank you. A good question. Well, you know, and even if not live, just something to be able to record it and distribute it out for people to access later. If they can, sure, or we can do it Facebook Live or okay, something like that. Or we've got a little time to work on it. We'll get some um, IT tech stuff uh, going on that. So okay. Thank yes, ma'am. You're welcome. And Chairman, that's all I have for you all, unless you have other questions. Thank you. all uh, Do you all have any other questions? Okay. Go on to the next item on our agenda for tonight. Be the first of two public comment sections. Uh, anyone who wishes to speak anything about the county, uh, you can come forward, state your name and address. You'll be limited to five minutes. But if you want to talk about the public hearing tonight, you will give an opportunity to speak at the public hearing at that time. Seeing no one coming forward, uh, does anyone online want to speak at this time? If you do, this is the public com first of two public comment sections. You will allowed five minutes. Seeing no one online wanting to speak, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda is the Minutes, a review and approval of minutes from the April 11th, 2023 meeting. Does anybody have any comments or changes to the minutes? Uh, see any, any corrections that need to be made or or uh, do I have a motion about the minutes? I have a motion that we <clears throat> adopt the minutes as presented from the April 11th, 2023 meeting. So I have a Mr. Uh, Goad has uh, made a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, do I have a second? I second. Okay. And I never can remember your last name. Johnson. Johnson. Morgan. Johnson. Morgan. Morgan. It's okay. hyphenated, sir. Okay. <laughs> I have a second by Mrs. Morgan. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Five zero. Minutes are approved. Okay. The next item is our public hearing for the night. The ZMP 2302 Renard Consulting. All right, Chairman Bibb, um, this is a, a request to ZMP 2302 Renard Consulting, uh, a rezoning request to conditionally rezone from A1 Agricultural General and I1 Industrial Limited to the B1 Business General Zoning District with respect to 4.7 plus or minus acres. Um, and there's several tax maps, tax map five, section A, parcels 48, 51, part of 52, and part of 53. Uh, tax map uh, 5A, section one, parcel L2, and tax map 5A, section two, parcels L1 and L1A. And the majority is really two large parcels, a part of parcels, and the rest are some smaller uh, parcels that are being rezoned. Um, the subject properties are located in the Southwest quadrant of Richmond Road, Route 250. Um, and James Madison Highway Route 15 and located in the Zion Crossroads Community Planning Area in the Columbia Election District. Again, I think most everyone's familiar. Um, this is the location here in the southwest quadrant of 250 and 15 uh, at the Gateway Area in um, Zion Crossroads to Flavana County on Route 15. And um, most recently, the um, applicant um, and the land use attorney and engineering um, folks had a community meeting on uh, Thursday, April 27th. On some of the highlights, um, the applicant's consultant had completed the December of 2022 traffic um, impact analysis TIA for the site location. Um, where the applicant plans to make improvements to Route 250 and Route 15 relative to the VDOT warranted 
turn lanes and prescribed um, other VDOT improvements for the new uses that are proposed as commercial uses. Um, the applicant also has proffered uh, new building elevations to include um, brick and manufactured stone materials. And overall, the meeting went quite well. The discussion was positive for commercial uses um, to provide um, retail sales tax uh, here to Flavana County and to provide a service and business, uh, new businesses to the community. So this is uh, the proposed Wawa retail store, um, their building elevations uh, from their architect. Um, and I think um, some of you um, have, a, you know, Mr. Bibb and Mrs. Eager attending um, TRC and some of the leading up um, to uh, tonight's public hearing. Um, there were some changes that um, Ms. Daniel Cosby will go over um, to us, minor changes uh, to even enhance this um, set of building elevations um, to the point uh, to make it even nicer than, uh, than it was before. And she'll go over some more of that here shortly. Um, but what we would like to talk to you about um, is our continued uh, efforts um, throughout uh, Flavana County and starting out in Zion Crossroads, um, our uh, site landscaping and screening requirements. Um, their landscaping plan specifically meets the zoning ordinance requirements as they relate to these items. Um, screening of parking areas from public road um, right of ways um, with shade trees, ornamental shrubs and materials um, to retain and what we worked with them on um, is not only a suburban, but kind of a little bit more rural suburban commercial design. So it doesn't appear that you're in the middle of a paved um, asphalt kind of environment. Um, and to have a little more um, to retain a, a rural character um, as best we can with some of the earth tone colors. Um, the dumpster and recycling enclosure area would um, uh, be screened by materials compatible with the principal structure that's required by the ordinance, such as the manufactured stone and brick materials. And overall, uh, we feel that this project um, creates a very welcoming gateway um, with their site design via landscaping screening and the architectural building elevations um, and materials as we've discussed. So again, the, um, this is kind of a, a second part of their um, elevations, the Wawa canopy. Um, here, and you'll see some of the stone um, and other um, aspects that you saw in the building previously or throughout. Um, so the dumpster enclosure and screening area has the earth tone colors, the manufactured stone veneer materials here, um, so that it, it's, it's a uniform um, for the building, the canopy, and um, the other storage areas would all be um, uniform and um, allowing for creating this this aspect that's more um, rural suburban as opposed to fully suburban you type um, request. What would a more suburban one type there look like? I mean, you wouldn't have, I guess, the this, this stone structures and... Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I think what we're uh, trying to indicate is that uh, there have been in the past uh, another Chesterfield, Short Pump, Henrico County, where some of these aspects weren't looked at. They just built a drive it building or some other type of building. Um, but but the other thing that uh, we'll let you know, this is the same developer that developed the Wawa at uh, 29 and Profit Road um, in Albemarle County. And um, I think um, um, that Mark Fontaine, the, the site developer um, in his company, Renaud Consulting, will tell you that this project is hopefully even gonna be slightly even better than that location. So that that was encouraging for us and we worked with, um, with them on this project. Um, and it's just because as they, in the last year or two, as they add more features and things that we talk to them about um, for our, our um, thoughts and this being the first project to come out of the ground as you come into Flavana County and they felt the same way. So, um, so going over some of uh, what the applicant has proffered out as excluding B B1 uses, this is a lot of the same type uses that um, we looked at for um, other rezonings recently here in the county, Wolfpack Properties, Mr. Odell's rezoning down the road on 250 and so on. But uh, the B1 rezoning um, 
uses that are, are excluded. You can see your shelter care facilities, assisted living. These are just things, auction houses, boarding housing, um, commercial cemeteries, flea markets, recreational vehicle sales, and self-storage facilities. Um, so some of the proffered out uses that um, the applicant uh, never wants to do and then remove them as SUPs, even as options, are the adult, adult uses dormitories. We're not having, you know, apartments and dormitories here at this location, halfway houses, uh, lumber yards, manufactured home sales, and um, a lot of outdoor entertainment gatherings and recreational facilities. So those are the uses that they proffered out. And then you may indicate or ask, well, what are some of the uses that they left in to the um, B1 zoning district? Um, and what we really looked at here and working with them as staff is um, pretty much like out parcel uses, daycare center, financial institution, or a bank, or a pharmacy use with drive through lanes. Um, so again, it's auto orientated type functions here with the Wawa as a gas station, um, medical outpatient uh, office um, type facility. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then obviously retail store uses to include the neighborhood convenience store in Delhi that they're proposing at this location. Um, some additional uses that are also um, new to B1 or ones that they've left in um, are bakery and brew pubs, um, corporate offices, an event facility actually in B1 um, is something that um, could be done in B1 zoning, restaurants, fine art studios, and other retail store uses. So um, that's a long, a large amount of uses that um, could be allowed on this property in not only the Wawa site, but also the um, other out parcel that they're zoning in under this rezoning. So at this point, I'd like to, um, it's okay, Chairman, we have to turn it over to Annual Cosby, who wants to go over the application requirements more in detail. Um, good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to join you tonight. My name is Ann Neal Cosby, and I'm a land use attorney at Wire Gill in Richmond. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of Renault Consulting, and Mark Fontaine is with me as well. Um, uh, he's the, the lead developer, business developer for this area, and also did the, the store in Albemarle, as you've, as you've heard. We also have on the phone our engineers. So if there is an engineering or a traffic question that comes up, we want to be able to give you all of the information that we can. So we're we're here in person and also virtually to 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 speak with you. I want to thank um, Mr. Miles for his presentation because I don't um, he did such a good job with the a lot of the information and requirements. I don't um, I, I can just hit some of the the high points. So I I've introduced us. I'll just go through our quick presentation and then hopefully um, answer any questions that you have. Um, as Mr. Miles said, we're requesting a rezoning of um, all or portions of the, the tax parcels that he mentioned that are currently either zoned um, agricultural for some of them or industrial and bring them all in under the B1 zoning with proffers that would be applicable to all. So all of those portions of those parcels, and you'll see sort of right there at that southwest, southwest quadrant of Zion Crossroads would all have the same zoning and be subject to the same regulations if it's approved, if the rezoning is approved. Those parcels really was a lot of parcel numbers. It really totals only 4.7 acres. And I'll put a slide up here to show you that the Wawa development is proposed for one of one portion of a parcel. And we call it parcel three on the slide. And that one will be the Wawa. There will be some additional land on parcel four, which is slightly to the north and includes the access road. That won't be part of the Wawa site, but it will still be rezoned if approved to be one subject to the use restrictions that Mr. Miles just spoke about. So, you know, the uses would be proffered out the ones that, you know, we think maybe wouldn't be appropriate here, but then the uses that Mr. Miles just showed, well, what else could be here? You know, the retail store, the bank, the, you know, the medical office, um, that would be rough um, another maybe two acres. So on that two acre out parcel, those would be some of the additional business uses that could, that could be located there. So, so before you tonight is really the, the Wawa development 
And then also, you know, the the remainder parcel that would be available for business use. And I'll touch briefly on, um, you know, the the treatment of that use under the comprehensive plan, because I, I do believe even though we're not before you with an actual use there, it's absolutely, I think, um, anticipated in the comprehensive plan for the Zion Crossroads area. So here is the location map. Um, I'm glad you all have screens in front of you because it's very <laughs> tiny up here for us. But but you can see essentially where the where all of the parcels are located. Again, it's you know north is that way. So um, but it's the southwest quadrant um, of that area with 250 along the north and then 15 coming north to south. Um, there you go. And so um, the parcels in red is really parcel three. And parcel four is um, is outlined in the blue. I think that's about right. And we'll show you again. Um, so again, that's the that's the area that would be rezoned to B one um, if it's approved. Um, and so on this exhibit, you can kind of see what I'm talking about there. In the red is parcel three, and that would be the Wawa location. Um, and then the parcel four it would be that other area up there that would be B1 for a particular, it would be ready for B1 development in the future. Um, and that would be, of course, either by right, or if something came in that needed a, you know, conditional use permit, that would be subject to zoning. So um, you might see that one again, but but that's not um, for Renault, that's not part of the development of, of this application. Um, but here's the Wawa site. Um, it has two access points, as you can tell. There's an existing access from 250 um, to the west, <laughs> uh, and then here, and then there would be a new access on Route 15 coming in. Um, so the you can see that the building itself, the 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 retail groceries convenience store is centrally located. Um, the um, the canopies and the fuel <coughs> Uh, services to the north, um, it would be facing 250. Um, the dumpsters, I think Douglas, uh, Mr. Moss had mentioned, you know, dumpsters being enclosed and also they are the furthest, you know, behind the building, the furthest and not visible really from Route 15, um, really, or 250. So, but what would you see on 250 and Route 15? This is where uh, Mr. Miles has talked about the landscaping plan that we've been working um, with staff. Um, from the very beginning, we we knew that the, the county had a very, as Mr. Miles said, robust landscaping ordinance and it does and so we work diligently with our um with our engineering firm to make sure that the landscaping that we've provided satisfies the county's landscaping ordinance and so we we believe we've done that um we've got significant landscaping as mr miles was talking about sort of with that rural more rural suburban setting you know what does that mean well it means that all along route 15 you know what you really see before you see the wall is you see a, a streetscape of of larger deciduous trees and then also small bushes. So along that whole frontage of 15, you would have um, new well-maintained landscaping and then also with along the entrance way. Um, there would also be landscaping interior to the site um, as shown um, on the on the site plan, but again, most of the significant landscaping is along those those streets. Um, the elevations, as Mr. Miles mentioned, this was our original elevation that we had provided, which has, um, you know, it has the color scheme, you know, that that Wawa has been using in, in you know, in these areas, including in Albemarle County. You know, it's got the earth tones. Um, it's got sort of the the manufactured river rock look. You know, but the the combined material so that it's got brick and river rock, you know, so there's a, a mixture and some, um, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Um, but um, I think that staff and maybe other members of, you know, county leadership looked at it and said, well, maybe that's pretty good, but maybe you could do a little bit better even. <laughs> and so, um, so we got the message. And so Mark went back. Um, and so we resubmitted, we, we listened and we resubmitted the elevations um, that um, that uh, Mr. Miles had mentioned. 
And so in particular, along the frontage of, of the building, the top right, uh, where before there had been simple white straight columns, you know, holding up that the, the front awning, now that's also river rock you know, the, those materials so that, um, you know, so that the whole facade to the front, you know, will have those types of materials versus anything. I think, you know, what Mr. Miles was saying in the sort of in the short pump areas and the Chesterfield areas that may be a little bit more, you know, traditional and, 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 and not as, uh, and maybe a little more plain. That's not this store. <laughs> this store has, uh, you know, the bells and whistles in the front. There was additional signage that's added. This is the bottom left. Um, and that would be seen from um, Route 15. So additional signage just to sort of make it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and um, the, the doors and sort of some of the outside units, instead of being the white, um, again, more of just sort of that traditional, you know, um, color now they've all been painted brown so again trying to um really incorporate the site into the landscape you know we understand right behind it you know is a is a lot of field and rural area so uh visually it's not as obtrusive we hope with the bright stark whites but everything that looks a little bit more like nature to the extent you can you know have this type of use that that has that sort of feel but we've worked really hard with um, staff to try to listen and um, and again try to create a you know a Wawa uh, business you know on this very busy corner but that complements you know the environment of Zion Crossroads where it's located. So can you go back to the white doors real quick, Mr. Miles? Yes, that's yeah, that's yeah. You would never here. guess it would make that much of a difference, right? Yeah, it's just like the two white posts on the end mm -hmm. of the yes. top right hand yep. corner, mm -hmm. something we noticed at another meeting. Yes, and you were right. And so, uh, so we've 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 made those changes. We think it looks a whole lot better. Um, and so we're we're happy with how we 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 think it looks. Um, I think the next slide is the same. That's the same uh, canopy slide, but you can see, you know, minus some of the landscaping features around it. That's generally speaking what would be, um, you know, on the two hundred and fifty side. Um, as for the proposed Wawa, I mean, it's um, it will operate like the rest of the, you know, of the Wawa's Renault is a is a um, preferred developer for the company. So um, this Wawa would uh, be approximately 6000 square feet. Um, it would have um, while the the front of the store faces 250 with the canopies, the, the backside actually, you know, has a has a. Um, an entrance that also looks like the entrance. I think we talked about this mm -hmm. at the community meeting because, you know, while Wawa is, um, you know, sells gasoline, it's also, you know, it's it's so much more than that. <laughs> and people, you know, um, you know, love to go to Wawa and get, you know, their coffee and their snacks and their milkshakes and steak and cheese and, steak and, cheese and biscuits. <laughs> and so there's a whole other entrance. If you're, even if you're not doing gas, you're welcome to come in and do everything else. So both of those entrances are equally weighted and important so that, um, so that everybody, you know, will feel like, um, you know, they're going into the front door. Um, there'll be nine fuel tanks located under the canopy. It'll be open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The two access points that we've talked about, the entrances would be constructed to VDOT standards, and I'll speak a little bit about that on the uh, another slide. And the landscaping and elevations um, are uh, included in the proffers. So I think that's good to, to know. Um, again, and Mr. Miles talked about this, we've proffered out those particular uses that he mentioned for, for all of the land that would be included in this rezoning. So parcel three for Wawa, but also parcel four. Um, so, you know, none of those sort of inappropriate, if you will, uses would ever be allowed unless there were a further zoning change. Um, and the Wawa will be developed in general conformance with the site plan um, that you've seen and with the landscaping. So, you know, we're, we'll be held to those standards um, going forward. Uh, the transportation, uh, Mr. Miles mentioned this, the traffic study was sent to VDOT back in December. So we've been working with VDOT for quite a while to make sure we get this right, because not only, you know, is the 
you know, what this um, site will look like important, you know, how it will act from a traffic movement um, perspective is equally important, you know, for this area. So uh, we've been talking to VDOT um, and the outcome is that the existing eastbound lane on 250 um, would would serve the traffic coming in from from east from um, from I guess from the west, but that one would remain. There would be a new westbound left turn lane into the site, and then on 15 north and south would have new entrances and all constructed to VDOT standard. So a lot of entrance um, uh, work around both 250 and 15. Um, the driveway locations would meet VDOT excess management for spacing. Again, so not getting too crowded in this corner. Um, and then finally, you know, working with VDOT, um, there no offsite improvements will be needed. So it, for this area, very specific to this site, that's what will be required, but nothing further out based on this particular use. As far as economic development, it's anticipated that this site will have approximately 50 employees. Um, it will be a revenue generator for the county um, on real estate tax and property tax. And, you know, those benefits uh, with minimal impact on county services. So um, we, um, we think that that's a benefit. I don't have a slide for this. Um, and I know that you are all very cognizant of the Zion Crossroads comprehensive plan sort of vision, but I did include in the application, we did, and I just wanted to just touch on it just for the record, um, that the, the current comprehensive plan, and I know you're in the process of updating your plan, but the current 2015 plan um, certainly anticipates this kind of development for Zion Crossroads. This property is all centrally located within the Zion Crossroads community planning area. And that's, quote, envisioned to be the most intensely developed part of the county. So there's other language and I won't sort of repeat it all. But I did just want to, you know, put out there for the record that, you know, we've tried given the comprehensive plan anticipates this type of intense development. We're trying to bring that, you know, with a wonderful project that I think most people generally like their Wawa's, but also, again, be respectful of the rural nature, trying to make sure it fits. Um, and so we've we've worked really hard to do that. And we appreciate your time and we um, are here to answer any questions, but hope we would get support and be able to move forward to the Board of Supervisors. Anybody have questions? I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, at the planning, well, at the community meeting, I was still a little concerned with the traffic flow. Yes. Um, has anything else been done or anything else suggested based on my comments? My comments were that at the light, the traffic merges in on 15 going south. And when people are in that right lane, they're always trying to get over and they're cutting into people or they're keeping down the road, even though the road doesn't exist. And how is that going to affect the traffic? I know there's going to be a third lane, but is there anything there, a barrier, anything that's going to be put there that will prevent that merging traffic from moving over into the traffic lane of people entering Wawa? Um, I, as we discussed, there will be additional um, uh, right of way. I mean, area in order for that um, those turn lanes to be constructed. Um, so, and that would be again in accordance with VDOT's current standards. So it would look like what's on this site plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can't say there's any barrier, you know, right. to prevent people from, you know, from doing what you're- Yeah, I guess that's my concern yeah. because even living in that area, if you're in the left lane, there's always somebody who knows they're supposed to merge over, who's not merging over. And they're either trying to cut someone off or they're continuing on down the road, even in the gravel portion of right. the road, trying to merge over. And I didn't know if there was any design of a barrier that would prevent them from potentially merging into the wild wild lane mm -hmm. while someone is coming in that lane mm -hmm. and causing an accident. So I was just wondering if anybody had thought about anything yeah. like that. So you're going to have an additional right turn lane and a left turn lane is what I see in the proposal yes. right there. 
So that would probably change that whole concept. That, yes, that, that's uh, what I'm wondering. Uh, and right. I, I think that VDOT would uh, uh, fix that there so that you won't have that merging. Problem. Right. Yeah, eliminate, eliminate that merging lane or something. Yeah, I, was, and, and I know eventually there's going to be a circle, I think, one day. Uh, one, uh, yeah, <laughs> up, up at the intersection yeah, here. One yeah, one day. Um, that was just my only concern. Yeah. And I, after the community meeting, me and my husband drove back up there and we were just trying to figure out how this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as we were just driving down, there was people still trying to merge over when they know they couldn't merge over. Right. And, you know, and he's like, well, eventually that person who's trying to merge over in that left lane is going to try to merge over in that far right turning lane, which could be a potential hazard. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering if anything else had been thought on that issue or yeah. if you found out anything else since the last community meeting. You know, I um I can defer either to Yeah, say Brian Parkins is online. Yeah, to if the Kimley Horn folks want to jump in if they've got information. But I would say that at least in front of this parcel where I think this, you know, the merging and trying to outrun each other right. is sort of happening. I mean, what I can say is at least in for this segment of 15, you know, it will be, you know, a, a wider roadway with the entrances and how that tapers further down, you know, if that will prevent that sort of race to merge right. or push it, you know, just push it further down the road. I mean, I suspect... Vita will it will be engineered so that it's a a, a smoother transition mm -hmm. so that it's not that that quick merge right. you know where the right lane ends mm -hmm. but that's really uh you know that's really more of an offsite sort of question but I can tell you that right in front you know this segment it won't be an issue anymore okay and do we envision most of the 64 traffic going on the 250 entrance or on the 15 entrance the so 64, I would think 15. 15. 15. Mm -hmm. Chairman yeah. Ben, Ryan Parkins has his hand up. Do you want, Mr. Cosby, do you want him? Yes, to, if that, okay. yeah, I would think, yeah. Ryan, do you want to unmute and add some? Okay. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Mr. Parkins. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, this is Ryan Parkins with Kimley Horn. I'm not the traffic engineer, but I'm with Kimley Horn who did the traffic study. Um, but yes, ma'am, to your point. Um, Ryan, we can't we have, hear you. Are you on mute? Stephen, up. Stephen McRae, if you could let, uh, with Kimley Horn, let Ryan know we can't hear him. Can you all hear me? You there, Stephen? I am. Can you all hear me? Uh, it must be in the same room because I don't see, hear either of them. Hey. Might be in their office. This is Ryan. Can you all hear me? Stephen just muted. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry, Ryan, we can't hear you here in the, um, uh, I think this is the first we've had someone online to try to speak. <laughs> um, I don't know if it helps, but I can hear both Ryan and Stephen, but I'm just a listener online. Yes, Frank, I can hear Stephen as well, so I think it's something yeah. online to hear each other. Yeah. So while he's trying to do that, let yes. me ask you one other question. Yes, ma'am. How are you all going to, um, or what exactly are you all going to do with the cemetery? Can you like tell us a little bit how you're going to, are you going to block it off or fence it off or aesthetically pleasing or? Right. Um, I don't, yeah, if you, um, I can say legally speaking, you know, from state law, we are required to, you know, protect um, the existing cemetery. And I'll let um, Mark discuss that, but, and then also provide, this, you know, rights to whoever might have the right to access that. So, okay. but I'll let him talk to Yeah, there's one slide that he showed where the, the cemetery currently is, mm -hmm. and it's going to be fenced off, and it'll be parking reserved out on the front portion of that uh, parcel okay. for people that want to visit the cemetery. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's not going to be part of either of the two parcels that we're rezoning. Okay. It's going to stay separate. Okay. It's this yellow piece right here, Ms. Right. Morgan. Right. 
in this kind of triangular area in between parcel three and four. Okay. It'd be kind of an entity unto its own, gotcha. protected. Thank you. Um, I had a quick question. This might just be due to my uh, lack of good eyesight, but um, <laughs> usually, you know, while us have the um, like the air for the tires and stuff, is that on here too? Uh, I don't know if it's shown on the site plan. The air, the air, air for tires. Air pump. There'll air definitely pump. be one there. Okay. Where, like, where exactly, do you know where exactly you would uh, put it on? Bring the site plan back up. See if I can find it. <laughs> so is it back by the dumpster enclosure, Mark? Uh, it'll be in a parking spot. Okay. It's not shown on here. It'll probably be from one of these parking spots over here. Okay. Go towards not. the back. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. The south side here, in one of the corners. And is there any more talk on the uh, electric cars, port and stations? You want to go there? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right. My daughter's question. <laughs> we, we we talked about this community meeting. Uh, we're not sure yet. Uh, okay. There, Wawa and Tesla has a relation, a working relationship, and at some point, uh, there might be Tesla charging stations here. Uh, they haven't made that determination yet. What we will do as developers. Um, is we're going to stub all the electricity uh, conduit so that if they make that decision during construction or after construction, they can quickly add Tesla charging stations. Okay. Um, we don't know at this time if they're going to, but okay. we're going to plan for it. I saw a green check mark for a while on Ryan Perkins, yeah. but uh, that went away. <clears throat> I, Can you all I think hear generally, us? um, with Daniel Cosby and myself, we what we understood from Ryan Perkins and working with us is that the uh, the fifteen side, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to it. The fifteen since since there's basically if you're coming in from Charlottesville, there's actually a really good right turn lane already constructed here. Mm -hmm. Um, as you kind of approach the traffic light, um, and you get into that right turn lane to come into Flavana. Um, but there is there is a right turn lane there, but this this intersection currently is a little tight. It's just because we're protecting the water storage tank and the closure of the mobile home uh, park, um, the glasses and such. But that that entrance area will get pretty uh, much much better and open. And, and what um, Mr. Perkins has been telling us throughout the the evolution of this project is a lot of work will be done on the 15 side to get these like you're like you're asking, ma'am. Um, I think to have everything work very smoothly, he said there was going to be a lot of um, grading and work that they're going to help uh, bring to make this site entrance in fully in the county to work really well. So um, if that helps you. Um, and in, in the traffic, um, in the TIA study that uh, Aaron LeBeau at um, VDOT Louisa Residency the Engineer, he worked with them. Uh, and also John Michael Whalen, our um, our planner here on in transportation work, uh, worked with them so that uh, we could make sure that this intersection here would be uh, equally as good as one up here at 250 of the larger roadway. But we think a lot of people, as Mr. Code just said, a lot of people are going to come straight in off of 64 and come right into this entrance. So right into Flavana County um, and shop. Well, the folks that are coming from Luvanna towards nine crossroads. I guess I have one more question. Um, where you have that inner, well, the entrance, is there going to be a center lane that turns in, or you're going to be required to stay in that permanent lane and then turn in? I mean, is an additional road that's going to be made or additional lane is going to be put there? Because right now there's two lanes that just branches out into four lanes coming into Zion Crossroads. Mm -hmm. In the present, in the presentation, right. didn't it show a left turn lane and a right turn lane? Separate, a separate, yes. A so separate is it a center left. lane or, you know, like if you go into the cities, there's a center lane that turns both ways. Okay. And then there's a yeah, the suicide lane. <laughs> a suicide lane. No, yeah. it's not going to be yeah. a suicide yeah. lane. Yeah, no. yeah, that's what I'm wondering. So it's going <laughs> to yeah. be a separate turn. It's going to be a separate. It's okay. not going to be that shared. Right. Yes, where you have to share. It's going to be a where there's an approach and then you would move over into that okay. lane. Because a the completely other reason, separate lane so that the through traffic can continue. Right. The other reason I'm asking because um, there is a um, sin bar 
building there mm-hmm. who also doesn't have a turning lane. So if you're trying to turn, you're in the two lanes, one that merges and one that keeps straight. Right. And if you're in that straight lane, you have to stop traffic to turn into Sinbar. Mm-hmm. So there really isn't a turning spot. So that will potentially be, I think, a hazard too, because right now, if you're just traveling, you have to stop traffic. Mm-hmm. And then the merging lanes are just cutting in. So I'm just trying to get some idea yeah. of how that flow is mm-hmm. going to mm-hmm. be. So, well, I would say that it, for this site, you know, the entrance points, you know, will be independent, you know, the okay. turning lanes, okay. uh, you know, with regard to the through lane, you know, that's there now that left, the left lane, Okay, what you're describing. I mean, that would still uh you know for somebody turning left now headed right. south turning left like you know might still stop through traffic but not the traffic that would be entering right. and exiting this site so in other words it would be going on sort of around what would be happening but hopefully much better engineered um i can assure you it will be much better engineered that area than what's out there now okay Will we receive a better view of how that's going to be done in the future, Mr. Miles? Um, actually, I pulled up in the traffic impact, you know, the TIA mm-hmm. uh, study that they did in December and went through VDOT with Kimberly Horn. So you can see that um, they're they're doing a lot of work on Route 15, okay. a whole lot more than they would on, on, on 250, because a lot of the 250 side of this project is already complete, so to speak. But you can see all of the the new road work that they're grading down and bringing all this to eliminate the merging that you're talking about. I, okay. I believe is what their their intent is to mm-hmm. get people in there. Um, and then you can also see, um, like you mentioned earlier, that the future road work for a roundabout there would be you know these medians or things that what people would be doing. But this this is currently not approved in the smart scale so okay i think it's more uh, i was back up here in the earlier part where you just see the road work that they're doing now and showing the existing turning movements and making this left turn movement and people would have they would basically if you're currently instead of merging over into this left lane to go straight into Flavana, mm-hmm. you have this taper and um, storage area that you're coming in. So the, those we're going into Wawa, we're getting out of the way of people going into Flavana. Okay. We're going in and making a right-hand turn in here, and then we're queuing up to either make a right out or make a left turn to come back out to the traffic light um, or coming from Flavana to turn in, um, you know, to, to the Wawa. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you. Thank you. If there's another um, other question for the applicant, we'll open a public hearing at this time. Anyone wish to speak on this project, you may come forward. Uh, you'll be limited to five minutes. Seeing no one here coming forward i'll open it up to anyone online anyone online wishing to speak about this project state your name and address you'll be limited to five minutes don't see anyone online uh wanting to speak i will end the public hearing this time and turn it over to the planning commission for discussion <clears throat> the uh, what I've seen in going to the TRC meeting and so forth like that and the suggestions that the county has made and they've really worked with the county to um, upgrade some of the things and like some of the some of the things when you you start looking at them those white doors and when you turned it to a brown door it made a whole lot of difference to putting that rock uh, arcade on the end post really made a whole lot of difference too. it made it look in, entirely better as far as I was concerned. And they've got the same thing on the posts at the uh, gas pumps and so forth like that. And they've worked to make sure that the screening is is good. And, and they've really been working with VDOT to try to, to make sure that uh, the turn lanes and so forth are um, going to work. And 
part of that's going to be up to VDOT as they can change the stuff or something right. like that because they can't really, change, but they can give the land to, for that merging lane to go off to the right. Yeah, I mean, other than some, you know, minor traffic concerns, which it sounds like are being worked out, I mean, I think this is um, the exact type of thing we would probably all envision going in a spot like this. Um, you know, we hear the word good neighbor a lot sitting up here, and I think that uh, the applicants have definitely been a good neighbor. I haven't just seen their presentation tonight and talked with some people in county staff. I mean, it sounds, I uh, appreciate your willingness to kind of work with us on, on you know, us, us maintaining our rural character. But um, aside from that, I mean, I think it's a great way to, you know, we talk about diversica diversification of tax base. I mean, this is um, a great opportunity for us to start heading in that direction. And um, it's in it's in a great area for it, in my opinion. I agree. Um, I'm very pleased that this is potentially going to come to the county because this is the type of businesses I would like to see in the Zions Crossroad area um, on the Fluvanna side. So I agree. You guys did a great job in answering the questions that I had in addition to a, a couple of other people that were at the community meeting. And, um, you know, of course, you know, I, I took what you said and I went up to see for myself. Of course, I had a couple of extra questions, but I guess I'll see the results down the road. So thank you. Anybody have any other questions or other comments? If not, do I have a motion? I move that the Planning Commission recommends approval of ZMP 2302, a rezoning request to conditionally rezone from A1 Agricultural General and I-1 Industrial Limited to the B-1 Business General Zoning District with respect to 4.7 plus minus acres of tax maps 5, Section A, parcels 48, 51, part of 52, and part of 53, tax map 5A, Section 1, parcel L-2, and tax map 5A, Section 2, parcels L-1 and L-1A, along with the proffer submitted on April 3rd, 2023. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Goad. Does uh, I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Lagasino. All in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Passes 5-0. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any uh, other main business tonight. Um, our next thing is the second of two public comment section. Uh, anyone wishing to speak on any item of the county? Please come forward, state your name and address. You'll be limited to five minutes. Seeing no one coming forward here, I'll open it up again to the people online. Uh, anyone online wishing to speak on any item uh, of the county uh, at this time, raise your hand and you will be limited to five minutes. Seeing no one wishing to speak, we'll end the second of two public comment sections. And if uh, there is no other business that we, or any objections from staff or the planning commission, we will adjourn at 7.58. We're now adjourned. <laughs>